Welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Devra and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making red currant jam with red currants that I picked from my garden. So I picked these a couple of weeks ago and I've just been defrosting them so they do look a little bit soggy. There's a whole lot of red currant juice running out of them there. <laughs> this jam recipe is super simple. All you're going to need is red currants, sugar, and not jam sugar, just normal granulated sugar and water. That's it! Three ingredients. And of course jam jars <laughs> to put it in, store it in. And maybe some labels and a little bit of parchment paper. But that's not really ingredients, is it? I've got 2.2 kilos of red currants or 2,200 grams. Of course the amount of red currants and black currants you might pick might be different. So the easiest way to work out your quantities is weigh up your red currants. You want to work out what three quarters of that might will be. So whatever quantity of fruit you have, just make sure you put in three quarters of that amount of sugar and water. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So for my jam, I've got 2,200 grams of red currants. So I shall be adding 1,650 mils of water. I've got a heavy base pot to put my red currants into. And make sure your pot is big enough because you don't want it to boil over. I really hope this is going to be big enough. Oh well, we'll soon find out. So place your pot on your stove. Add in your red currants. And then I'm going to add 1,650 milliliters of water. So now I've added the red currants and the water into that pot. I'm going to switch on the heat, bring it to a boil and let it simmer for 25 minutes. I'm sure there's a lid that fitted this. Oh, there maybe is. Excellent. Remember to keep stirring so nothing gets stuck or burnt to the bottom of the pan. Because to be honest, the base of this pot probably isn't heavy enough for it not to burn and stick. So I'm going to keep a close eye on this. So when this starts boiling, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. It's finally started to boil. So we're going to turn the heat right down. I'm going to leave the red currants to simmer for 25 minutes. So I'm not going to put a lid on the pot because I want it to reduce by about a third. So while that's simmering, I'm going to sterilise my jam jars at the same time in pots of boiling water. So hopefully when my jam's ready, they'll be clean, sterilised and ready to fill. So it's now been boiling for 25 minutes. That's how it's looking. It's still quite watery, but I'm sure when we get it blended, it'll be fine. I'm not a fan of chunky jams. I prefer a smooth jam with seeds. So I'm going to blend it using a hand mixer. Is it a hand mixer? Blender? Hand blender to hopefully make my jam smooth. <laughs> so now my mixture is a whole lot smoother. It's time to add the sugar. So the same as the water, I'm going to be adding 1,650 grams of sugar. Just normal sugar, not jam sugar, because red currants and black currants have loads of pectin in them. So hopefully there's no need to use jam sugar. Normal granulated sugar should work perfectly. I'm just going to pour that in. Now the sugar's been added, I'm going to turn the heat back on and bring it to a rolling boil for between 15 to 30 minutes. The setting point for red currant jam is apparently 104 degrees or 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And thanks to the last year, I now have a temperature thermometer, an infrared thermometer. So hopefully I'll be able to check this time if I've reached the setting point. Also to check the setting point of my jam, I'll be doing two different tests. The flake tests, when you scoop a bit of the jam on a spoon and then let the jam drip off. If it flakes, it's good to go. If not, keep boiling. The second test is put a little bit of jam on a plate, leave it to cool for a few minutes and then drag the back of a spoon through it and if it wrinkles, it's good to go as well. Also, this is the point you want to keep stirring your jam. Do not let your jam burn to the bottom of your pan. It's been hitting up for a little while. Let's have a little check, see how it's doing. Okay, 84 degrees. It's nearly boiling though. You can see it all starting to roll in from the sides into the middle. 104 degrees. So it's reached its setting point. Now we just have to put a timer on for up to 30 minutes. Please don't stick to the bottom. Please, please, please. You also want to try and skim off any of this froth. Seems like a bit of a waste of jam, but that's what it tells me to do. If it means a lovely clear jam, that's what we'll do. I'm going to stick a timer on for 30 minutes. And if, like me, you keep spilling jam everywhere, 
try and clean it up quick because it's really hard to get off and it cools. Oh, it is everywhere. The jam's been boiling for 25 minutes. Let's take a spoonful, pop that on a plate. I'm going to leave this to cool for a few minutes and then we will test it. It's looking pretty watery though. And while the jam's been boiling, I've taken my jars out of the boiling water and set them up ready for some jam pudding. That's never jammy yet, is it, do you think? Moment of truth, the wrinkle test. That didn't wrinkle at all, did it? Might try it instead, though. Oh. It's really sharp, but really sweet. It's really nice. Exactly how it should be. But yeah, still really watery. I have a horrible feeling that when I was boiling the water in the red currant right at the start, I just didn't let it reduce enough. So it's still quite watery. Oh, that's the 30 minute timer up. I am going to put this on for another 10 minutes and see if I can get this to be a more jammy consistency. Come on, the jam. It's now been 40 minutes. Let's test it again. Flick test. <laughs> oh. That still seems pretty watery to me. We'll give this a few minutes to cool down and we'll try that again. There's no way this is jam yet. Wrinkle test. Oh, that's nearly there. 10 more minutes. <laughs> Another 10 minutes. Sometimes good things come to those who wait. So I always think this is the danger time. This last five, 10 minutes. I guess when it can all go horribly wrong and it sticks to the bottom, so I'm going to keep stirring. Hopefully in the next 10 minutes, we will have jam. If this ain't jam now, it's never going to be. Yes! It's jam! Oh, that's definitely a wrinkle. Do you see that? It's finally jam. To get my jam into my jars, I'm going to be using a jug, a funnel, Using a funnel hopefully will make this process a little bit less messy. Right, let's get this done before the jam cools. This is going to be messy, isn't it? Oh, it is going to be messy. Well, the jam jars are filled. Yeah, this was not the tidy jam making experience I had envisaged for myself. <laughs> oh, it's everywhere. There is jam drips everywhere. In fact, everything's an absolute mess. But the jam jars are filled and that's all that matters. To seal my jars, I've pre-cut these little circles of parchment paper. I've also got some rum. I might need a drink after doing this, try to clean everything up. But that's not what it's for. I'm gonna pour some I'm gonna pour some rum in the little dish. Oh well. I'm gonna pour some rum in this dish, pop in my parchment circle, give that a good soak, and then pop that on top of the jam. Now the little parchment lid is on. Before the jam cools down, I'm gonna pop my lids on. So hopefully as they cool. That lid will get sucked in and sucked down and keep the jam good for a really long time. And now we wait for them to cool down. It's the next day, the jam is cooled and I've popped some labels on. I'll leave the full method and recipe in the description box below if you want to try and make this yourself. Of course, if you make it, please drop me a wee comment and let me know what you think of it or let me know how you got on or if you've got any suggestions for making this recipe better. And of course, it wouldn't be a jam recipe without a taste test. I have a helper. Hello! <laughs> you ready to try some jam? I think so, it is breakfast time. Absolutely. Oh, it's good, quite a good consistency. It's very, very jammy. Scoop said jam out. Oh, no, don't focus on me, focus on the jam. Yes, yum. Cheers! Mm. A jam. That's really good. That is really good. I think this year's is a much better consistency actually. Last year's was really thick and congealed, wasn't it? Mmm. No, it's a really nice consistency. That'll spread in your toast. Lovely in the morning. Beautiful. Yum. Mmm. Yeah, good thanks. Good for the Christmas hampers. That as well. Yes. We're organised. 
are getting organised. Well, thanks very much. I'll put that in the fridge for a steam. Fantastic. You're welcome. Ta-da. A very successful jam taste test. It's definitely my most successful jam so far. It's just really nice red currant jam. Yeah, I'd definitely be making this next year. This is brilliant. As it's breakfast time, I'm going to have my coffee, make myself some jam on toast. And if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Apparently I've got to wait for the dishwasher. It's just finishing. It's not a poltergeist, it's just my dishwasher opening. Oh, I don't know if I'll have to put my different microphone so you can be heard as well. Should I? I think you're all right. <laughs> <laughs>